Well, today we continue our series of messages based on the themes found in Rob Fuquay's book, The God We Can Know, which is an exploration of the I Am sayings of Jesus that are recorded in the 10th chapter of the Gospel according to John. Already over the past few weeks, we've looked at Jesus saying, I am the bread of life, and last Sunday, I am the light of the world. And today we turn our attention to the theme, I am the good shepherd. Our scripture lesson for today uh, shares with us these words and helps us to realize that through these particular word pictures, these images, God is making himself known to us, especially in the person of Jesus Christ. Let us uh, share together the gospel according to John, beginning at verse 1. Very truly I tell you, Anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them. And the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. And now will you read this next verse with me? I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. One of the most beautiful metaphors in all of the scriptures for the relationship between God and his people is that of a shepherd in relationship to his sheep. It is an image that is deeply woven into the language and the imagery of the Bible. Even before Jesus was born, the prophet Isaiah pictured the Messiah as being like a shepherd of a flock of sheep. And so he wrote, he will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and he will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those who are with young. There is within many of us a mental picture of Jesus as the watchful shepherd caring for his sheep. It's an image that strengthens and encourages us throughout our lives. It is also an image that comforts us in sorrow and in death. Throughout my childhood years, our family attended the Elm Avenue Methodist Church in Portsmouth, Virginia, near Norfolk and Virginia Beach. And at the back of our church's sanctuary were three large stained glass windows, the ones you see before you this morning. The center window portrayed Jesus as the good shepherd with a small lamb under his right arm and another small lamb under his left arm and with three sheep at his feet, one of which is drinking from a tiny stream that, are, that is passing by the feet of Jesus. 
That portrait of Jesus as the good shepherd uh, comes to my mind time and time again whenever I think of Jesus, and especially whenever we are reading the 23rd Psalm or the 10th chapter of the Gospel of John, wherein Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Now, most of the places where I have been in ministry, people knew nothing about sheep. The most they knew about sheep is that they had once worn a wool coat. But you come from an area where sheep are much more common. In fact, I was surprised back before Christmas when I looked out of the field just off of 460 and saw a whole flock of sheep. And so I've begun to notice that each and every time I pass that particular section of 460. I have no doubt that there are people here today who know far more about sheep than this city boy does. But from what I know about shepherding, the shepherd's life was a difficult life. It was spent outdoors and the rough and stony ground of the dry, sun-parched Judean plateau was the home of the shepherd staff in hand, watching over his scattered flock. Still today, if you go to Israel, it is not at all uncommon to happen upon a young shepherd boy tending to a flock of sheep. No flock could graze those semi-arid Judean hills without the assistance of the shepherd. For you see, Sheep do not take care of themselves, as many would suppose. More than any other livestock, they require endless attention and meticulous care. Sheep are sometimes fearful and timid. They are often stubborn, and they are prone to wander away. And so is it any wonder that Jesus has chosen to compare us to sheep? For we possess many of those same characteristics in our lives, don't we? In our relationship with God. Not only was the shepherd responsible for attending to the care and well-being of his flock, a good shepherd must also be vigilant, standing watch from early dawn until night, on guard to protect his sheep from wild predator animals and those that might attempt to steal sheep from the flock. In the 10th chapter of John's gospel, Jesus makes this bold declaration. He says, I am the good shepherd. And what Jesus is trying to say is that his concern and his watchful care for each of us is similar to that of a good shepherd. And so we might ask ourselves this morning, what are some of the characteristics of a good shepherd that we see in Jesus. The first characteristic of a good shepherd that we see in Jesus is that a good shepherd knows his sheep. Jesus says, I know my own and my own know me. It is my understanding that in Palestine, sheep belonging to more than one shepherd might be gathered together in one communal sheepfold for the night that they might be watched over. And then when morning came, those sheep would need to be separated out back into the flocks from which they had come to the various shepherds. And the good shepherd would know each of his own sheep. Sometimes I'm told that that shepherds gave their sheep names and that he actually knew the names of all of the individual sheep in his flock. But that he would know his sheep and he would be able to separate his sheep out from the sheep of other shepherds and that not only would the shepherd know the sheep, but the sheep would know the shepherd and that they would know his voice and follow only him. There's just so much that we could unpack in that part of the story alone there of how the shepherd knows his own and how they know him. But all of this is representative of the marks of a good shepherd. A shepherd knows his sheep. He knows them perhaps even by name. 
when I was a freshman at Virginia Wesleyan College, President Lambeth Clark, one of the presidents of that college who served for many years, was such a marvelous president and admittedly, Virginia Wesleyan was a substantially smaller college and still is than Virginia Tech. But my parents would never forget Parents' Day weekend. I had only been in school for about a month and my parents came to the campus and, and uh, President Clark met my parents and they said, we're the Rollies. And he said, oh, you're Ralph's parents. And said, you're from Portsmouth, aren't you? And began to share little bits and pieces that he knew about me. I can't tell you what an impression that made on my parents. That the president of Virginia Wesleyan College knew me and knew me by name and knew something about me. Jesus, the good shepherd, knows each of us. He knows us by appearance. He knows us by name. He knows everything there is to know about us. His relationship with us is so intimate that it may be compared with the relationship between the Father and the Son. The second characteristic of a good shepherd that we find in Jesus is that a good shepherd cares, really cares for his sheep. Not like a hireling but as someone who really cares for his sheep. It's the shepherd who in the sun-parched hills of Judea leads his flock to green pastures. He, he brings them to pools of still water that they might quench their thirst. A good shepherd cares for his sheep so much that he will not rest until one that has wandered off and become lost has been found and reunited with the flock once again. Such is the care of a good shepherd. The image of Jesus as the good shepherd helps us to understand that God, the great I am, has a similar kind of care and concern for each of us. That we matter to God, each of us. That God is distressed when we have become separated from his love and watchful care. of heaven restored to the love and watchful care of the one who is our good shepherd and so the second characteristic of a good shepherd that we see evidenced in jesus is that he cares for his flock he cares for us the third characteristic of a good shepherd is that that we find in jesus is that a good shepherd protects his sheep at all costs. In Palestine, the shepherd was the sheep's only defense against the wolves and other wild animals that roamed the countryside. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 34 through 35, David, one day to become King David, tells Saul, Your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, listen to this, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. Imagine that. With nothing more, perhaps, than a shepherd's staff, David would go after a lion or a bear that attempted to carry off one of the sheep belonging to his father's flock. The task of a shepherd was no job for the timid. A shepherd might literally lay down his life in defense of his flock. Jesus says, if you want to know who I am, if you want to know who God is, think of the courageous shepherd who stands ready to take on those who would bring harm or attempt to carry off the sheep belonging to my father's flock. The NIV Student Bible asks the question, what would a good shepherd look like today? And then it answers that question with a story. One Memorial Day weekend, a Christian dentist named James Reddick 
took his 12-year-old daughter and 11-year-old son to Mount Rainier in Washington State to teach them the joy of mountain hiking. And while they were hiking, a sudden storm came up and it began to batter them with hurricane force winds and then with thick, wet sheets of snow. A blinding whiteout made it impossible for them to see the trail or to move on the steep mountain slopes. Reddick decided there was only one thing to do, and so he laboriously dug an oblong trench with an aluminum mess kit, and then he tucked his children into sleeping bags into that trench away from the entrance. And he covered the opening with a tarp. But the tarp kept blowing away, exposing the trench to the swirling snow outside. Reddick found that he had to lie directly across the opening, using his own body's weight in order to hold down the edges of the tarp to keep it in place. And so his body protected his son and daughter from the howling wind and the driving snow. Two days passed before searchers finally noticed the corner of a backpack protruding from the deep snow. And so they rushed to the site, hoping that the snow-covered mound would contain the three missing hikers for whom they had been searching. Inside, they found Sharon and David Reddick very much alive. But the stiff body of their father lay against one wall of the snow cave. He had, as one of the searchers said, taken the cold spot, using his own back as the outer wall to protect his children. Jesus says that a good shepherd is one who will lay down his life for his sheep. Nothing, not ravaging cold thieves or wolves, shall come between the good shepherd and his sheep. In contrast to the religious leaders of his day, Jesus compares himself to a good shepherd under whose watchful care the sheep find both security and enjoyment in life. A good shepherd who cares so much for the sheep, he would readily lay down his life to protect them. And soon we would discover that this was much more than an idle boast. For during this season of Lent especially, we are reminded that at the heart of our faith as Christians is the belief that when we were in danger of eternal destruction, Jesus laid down his own life for us upon the cross. If you want to know God, then look to Jesus, our good shepherd the one who knows us and cares for us and protects us and who, when it mattered most, laid down his life for us. That, my friends, is who God is. And we know that by looking at Jesus. Will you turn now in your bulletin to the litany found there that we might use this as a response to God's word for this day? Will you join in response? When we find ourselves wondering how we are expected to navigate this confusing, intimidating world, help us to remember that we are not alone because Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. When we feel tempted to stray from our communities, to try to make it on our own without the help of those who care about us, remind us that we are never out of your care when Jesus tells us, I am the good shepherd. When we take a risk and venture out alone anyway, remind us that there is no distance we can wander, that God is not still guarding and holding us close when Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. When we're too tired to do or to think anymore, 
Help us to remember to rest and feel safe under the care and keeping of Jesus, who says, I am the good shepherd. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for being our good shepherd, the one who watches over and cares for us and protects us, and when it mattered the most, laid down your life for us. Help us to be the sheep of your pasture, but help us to be more than sheep. Teach us how to be shepherds for others that we may help them to know of your love for them as well. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Um, let's stand and sing together hymn 138. The King